Patrick Hogan is the Emmy-nominated sound editor from Reservation Dogs. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby, and I want to start off by asking you, Patrick, what for you is one of the biggest challenges in sound editing this show? You know, um, you know, it's kind of you know, I, the first challenge would be just just getting out of the way of the show. I mean, it's such a great show. Um, you know, so so the that was the glib answer. The 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 more structured answer would be supporting the show and um expanding on the themes that an episode is is um addressing and being true to the story um in a way that's that doesn't distract from the story you know the best use of sound is usually when you don't even know that the sound has had an impact or done something usually one of the advantages of sound and one of the things i love about sound is is we can subtly affect the way you're perceiving uh, what you're seeing with your eyes, which is kind of our dominant sense is sight, right? Sight kind of drives what we, what we, um, how we process what's around us. And so with the sound, we can, we can do very subtle things that you maybe don't catch. And on reservation dogs, it's, you know, it's such a great show. We don't have to do anything too complicated. And sometimes doing the simpler thing can be more challenging you know, finding one good sound to support something can be much more of a challenge than creating a huge 30 track sound design, you know, that is massive and sounds cool and sounds really great, but is it conflict with, with the episode? And that's what Reservation Dogs is. It's it's not a show where you have, you know, you don't have gunfights, you don't have, you, very, you occasionally have a fist fight, but, you know, even then you don't, you know, you don't have a lot of the, the bigger sounds. So I'm really... um happy that we were recognized for a show where it was it was the simpler approach and the storytelling approach of sound um that we're getting recognized for can you think of a sort of like um smaller or sort of like a smaller sound that you think left a big impact sort of one of those subtle moments um yeah i mean so i mean there's you know and and we'd, we'd make a big difference or we differentiate um when we're on the reservation it's it's small sound, you know. The idea is is they're not in a bustling suburb. You don't hear a lot of people, um, even when they're when they're at like, like when they're at the IHS um, building, which is kind of the the hub of the show where everybody works, and that's kind of like the social hub where everybody goes in the show. Um, which for those of us who didn't grow up on reservations, don't kind of get that. The show is kind of a, an opening into that world. Um, you know, we don't play, you know, you might, when we're out in that parking lot, you might play a lot of cars and pulling up and leaving, and you might play a lot of people talking and 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 showing up uh, there. And we don't, we keep it very sparse. And then we differentiate that when they go into the city, you know, a big story plot or, or the first two seasons or a story arc was, you know, the kids wanting to go to Los Angeles and that journey. And I don't want to spoil anything for those who haven't seen it, but we do, you know, if we get there, there's very much a drastic change in the sound. And if they do make it to Los Angeles, suddenly you're hearing lots of cars and horns and you're constantly hearing people talking and yelling and just that bustling life of, of the big city versus being someplace where everything's a bit more remote and everything's kind of stretched out and you can walk down a street and not see another car or hear another person. Um, so that, that lifestyle, which is kind of, again, supporting the story of, you know, as the story starts, these are these kids who have this plan to, to escape the res and get to, you know, the big city, whether that's good or bad, will you know, will remain to be seen, but that's kind of their goal. So we kind of play into that with the sound and it's definitely much more sparse. You hear more nature, but it's not busy nature. Like in, in, in one of the first episodes uh, that we worked on, the note that came back from Sterling was, you know, too many animals, too many animals. Like find a couple places to put animal, but you know, you know, a city folk. I'm a city folk. I live in Los Angeles. You know, we think that when you're out in the country, you're just surrounded by animals. And he was like, no, no, that's you know, that that's not the case. When you're out, there, it's not just like there's suddenly all these animals hanging out around you when you're out, you know, in the small town and out in the farms and stuff. Unless you're actually in the barn or where the you know in the in the in the fields where the you know the the stock is and stuff. So that was some of the things we had to develop 
over time those you know figuring out where to put those and then the other challenge with the show uh is on that same thing as the dialogue um these actors improv a lot you know they they usually do some scripted takes and then they'll they'll improv and they'll you know say different lines or the director might call out a line for them to try and so they kind of overlap and they kind of are having fun with it and that presents challenges in that we don't want to do ADR well you know we we try to fix the sound that was recorded on set and we have to do a lot of tricks and go through other takes but because they're improving it isn't like we have five or six takes of them saying that exact line mm. so if the one that is where the delivery is great has a noise on it we can't necessarily find another take that's exactly the same to fix it but at the same time um they want the the intimacy and immediacy of the production and they they don't want to just have the actors come in and and redo it on a set so that takes a lot of time and we actually spend a lot more time kind of per finished minute of show working on the dialogue tracks than we do on much bigger budgeted shows that I work on. We actually have more time is spent on working that dialogue uh, than, than we went on, on some of the big shows because it's that important. Mm. You, you were saying how special like this show was in terms of story and uh, what, 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 it's happening with characters and things. Uh, what do you think is really special about this show? What do you think its real strength is? Well, I mean, it's a quality show. I'll I'll, I'll get on my soapbox real quick, and and yeah. I'm very I'm very proud to to be the representative of Reservation Dogs. Uh, we're the only Emmy nomination, and that frankly is a shame. That is a, a total shame. Um, hopefully, hopefully, my pounding the table will lead towards more recognition next season for its last season. Um, it's it's just everybody who watches the show loves it, and I get the it's hard to pitch the show. I get the, I get the fact that it's kind of hard to explain in words um, the magic of the show, and you kind of have to watch it. But everybody who watches go, oh, I love that show, and and part of it is it's 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 a voice we haven't heard. You know, this is a show that is uh, conceived of, written, directed, and starring uh, Indigenous peoples. You know, so there's an authenticity to it. That just it, you know, when you hear something, even though it's a fictional story and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a narrative television show, when it speaks truth, you recognize that you, you know, and I think this year, a lot of the shows, you know, the, you know, the bear in Chicago, like there's certain shows that have an authenticity to where they come from that you recognize uh, as truth. And I think reservation dogs has that truth of it's, a, it's a true story in that it's a true experience. And then on the on the flip side, it's funny. You know, one of Sterling Singh, how he says is, I want to, you know, indigenous people are funny, you know. Mm -hmm. And so often the stereotype in movies have been of the sage wise, you know, medicine man type character or the the beaten down, downtrodden, you know, uh, folk who live on the reservation. And he wanted to say, no, we're, you know, we're funny. You know, we're we're funny people. We laugh. And so the show, I mean, the show will turn on a dime. You can be laughing one moment and then crying the next. And I think that's what people like about the show. And I think that's going back to what I was saying about the sound. The, the, the challenge with the sound is to make sure that we're supporting that and not stepping on it because it is a delicate balance to, to have people laughing uproariously one minute and then crying the next at some really uh, devastating emotional moment. Yeah. Like, and, and you did say like you are, res dogs uh first and only emmy nominee for not just this season but the first yeah. two seasons of yeah, the show the what does one. it mean for you to represent the show in that well way? for for those of you who watch the show i guess i'm the white steve yeah. <laughs> of, <laughs> of the show. Uh, i actually grew up i grew up on a small island actually uh just north of uh australia out in the pacific called guam uh, and I was, I kind of grew up as a white Steve with, you know, being on this island uh, with all my indigenous friends. And so while it's a totally different, um, you know, Guam is not anywhere near or anything like Oklahoma. Um, I get that. I, I kind of um, identify with white Steve, but um, you know, again, I, it's a shame. I'm very proud of it. I'm proud of the work we do. And I, I will say that I'll take this and I, not just for reservation docs, but any show that I work on, you know, sound is the very last step. So to me, in a sense, when a show is recognized for its sound, it is kind of in a way, a, also a recognition of all the steps that came before that, 
uh, point because no matter how good of a job I do as a supervising sound editor, know how good the mixers do uh, mixing the show, all the editors that are working with me, no matter how good of a job they do, if the, if the script isn't great and the acting isn't great and the directing isn't great and the picture editing isn't great and all those other steps that came before we do our work, if all of those aren't great, then we don't get recognized because amazing sound on a show that nobody watched generally does not win awards um, because you are kind of judging the show as a whole, even when you're judging the individual parts. When you're judging best director, you can't really give someone a best directing if the acting wasn't good and the script wasn't good, right? That kind of goes um, as a part of it. And I think the same thing for sound. So I, I am, I, I think that, that the recognition of sound is at least recognizing that all the parts of the process that came before that were of the highest quality. And um, so I'm, I, you know, I'm proud. And if, you know, if we get to win, I'll get up there and I'll thank all those other people who didn't get the recognition that they, you know, deserve. I mean, it's, it's judging art, you know, so I, I get that, you know, and only five, you know, if I ran, if I ran the Emmys, there'd be, you know, 50 nominations and 10 winners. Cause there's just too, yeah. there's too much good stuff out there. So I get the, not every show can get nominated. And I wouldn't take away any of the shows that were nominated to add reservation yeah. dogs. Um, Cause I think they're all deserving. I just, I, you know, I hope that um, more people find the show and, and can rec and watch it and enjoy it. Cause it's just, I was a fan of the show before I got a chance to work on the show. So mm. um, I've really enjoyed it. And this is your 10th Emmy nomination. Um, how's, how's this one? Is this, is this one different in any ways? You know, I don't know. Uh, this one was maybe less expected simply because I knew that there wasn't a lot of, um, you know, there wasn't a big push and a lot of energy or a lot of excitement going into the Emmys for Reservation Dogs simply because it is such a small show. And while the people who watch the show are just huge fans and they love the show, it isn't a show that has the water cooler talk where everybody in the nation's, you know, talking, you know, the following day about what happened in that episode and season two aired a long time ago as well yeah and that yeah right. and that and part of it is the timing you know the timing of it is such that the the new season hasn't come out yet mm. so for some shows the new season's out while you're voting on the yeah. prior season <laughs> yeah. and the, i mean and that helps right because mm. you know i i wonder if some people knew they were voting for the prior season when they voted yeah because it's out so it, it, it it's in their consciousness and they know what the show is whereas it's been you know, it comes out, the show airs every year in August, which mm. is a bad timing for this particular um, um, award because you're voting for it six, seven months after uh, it, it came out and the new season hasn't come out. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's um, it's unfortunate that um, it hasn't gotten more recognition uh, in that regard, but it does get a lot of like the critics who 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 watch shows and judge them day in day out recognize how good the show is, and everybody I know who watches the show, which is the most important thing, people who watch the show, watch the whole series, mm. and are in tears that it's coming to an end this fall. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that answered the question, or not, but yeah, no, it, no, um, it did. Um, you were nominated at the Emmys for the work you did on the episode. Um, this is where the plot thickens. Um, there's, you know, tripping out on uh, there's there's tripping out. There's uh, the order of midstreamers and uh, suspicious yeah. activity happening happening with fish. What was the most fun part of that episode to sound edit for you? Boy, you know, yeah, that was, a. I mean, obviously we nominated it because it was, it was an episode that goes in so many different directions and it was kind of the episode that showcased sound and our sound design and, and our mm -hmm. sound work on the show in many ways. I mean, they were filming out in real woods and so the dialogue again was a challenge and we didn't want to do much um, ADR. I mean, I can't even talk about, you know, when I, when I reached out to the Foley team and told them what I needed the sound for <laughs> with the initiation, <laughs> with the initiation involving um, fish. And I had to discuss, you know, they were like, can we really do that? Are we allowed, you know, are we allowed to go that far? And I said, yep, go for it. They said, we can, we can make those sounds. 
<laughs> I didn't ask them. I don't want to spoil it, and I don't know what I want to keep this PG. Um, but we we told them no, make make those sounds, and I didn't ask them how they made those sounds. You know what happens on the fully stage stays on the fully stage. <laughs> um, but it was fun, and I mean, like th- things like when when uh, Zon McLaren, who plays Big, came in to do ADR, I was talking to him. He really stuck his finger down his throat <laughs> and threw up there on camera for that moment. I mean, that's again, that's like what reserva- Reservation Dogs is very real and raw in a lot of ways. They're all actors, but they're all bringing their personal uh, experience and life to these characters. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun, you know, pitching his voice when he's tripping and then adding the other voices. And and he, you know, again, it's how it all comes together, like it was written really funny. But then what he did with his voice on set was really funny. And then when we pitched it down to sound all weird and trippy and show that his brain's kind of melting um it just took it to a whole new level so there were a lot of uh a lot of fun bits um little i mean to me i find joy in like little things like we did fully of of you know if, i don't know if anybody notices but kenny boy grabs a stick and holds it like it's a gun when they try to arrest the the guys in the woods and so we had fun just making fully of him like fumbling with the stick that he's pretending as a gun and it's in the background I don't even know if anybody really even noticed the fact that he's like pretending he's got a gun on them but it's just a stick because he's so you know out of his mind that he probably doesn't even know the difference um so there's lots of fun like that you know trying to figure out trying to create the design for the giant moving metal uh figurine that's marching through the woods that was a bit of a challenge because we had to wait for the vfx to come in which was last minute so that was a lot of communicating with the sound effects editors and also me cutting some stuff on the stage and kind of building it kind of you know, last minute, normally we'd like to have more time with these things. But again, you know, this is a show that's not a giant budget show that just has money to throw at things. So um, we had a, we had a jump at the last minute, but um, it's great. And then we're laughing on the stage. You know, it's so funny, especially that episode. Um, it was so funny um, uh, to create and then hear it all come, come to life. So those are just some of the examples, I guess, of the fun we had on it. Oh, awesome. Well, Patrick, thanks so much for talking to us today. People can go to goldderby.com to follow the awards races and make your Emmy predictions. And um, even though there's only one Reservation Dogs Emmy nomination, there is, I believe, uh, about one, two, three, four, five. Uh, There are five um, Gold Derby TV award nominations for Res Dogs. So people can go and vote for those awards at Gold Derby as well. So, and that, that's from fans of TV and awards all over. Uh, thousands of people vote in those. So that's uh, fantastic, Patrick. Um, all the best of luck with you for the Emmy Awards. And just thanks so much for your time today. Hey, thank you. Enjoyed it. 